Welcome to your next video about Texas history. Today we're going to be talking about the Native Americans of Texas. Now here you see a map of the different Ameri uh, Native American tribes across Texas. Now we're not going to go over all of these, but we're going to go over most of them in this video. Just as a little thought question, why do you think many of the first Americans continue to travel southward after crossing the land bridge? They start way out here and they move all the way down and some of them into Texas. So take a, a minute and think about that. Now before we talk about the various groups in Texas, know that most of those groups had something to do with the buffalo. You need to know the various uses of the buffalo. So right now I would stop and pause the video and I would take some notes on some of the uses of the buffalo like how they use the teeth, how they use their horns, how they use their fat and the hide. I would take some notes on all of those things. The first group we're going to talk about are called the fishermen. Now they're fishermen because that's where their main source of diet comes from. They're going to be all through this general area right here along the Gulf Coast. From the Trinity River all the way to Corpus Christi. The two groups in the fishermen tribes are the Karankawas and the Atacapans. Now I've heard this also pronounced Atacapans. Either one is fine. The Karankawas are tall and they're well built. They're very tall and lean because of the diet which consists mostly of seafood. The Atacapans are short and stout. Most of their diet does come from seafood like the Karankawa but the only difference is they're a little more inland and with that they're going to add more things to their diet as they search for different food sources. Both of these tribes are going to use alligator fat and dirt that they smear together all over their body to ward off mosquitoes. If you're living along the Gulf Coast and you're around water, you definitely need something to do that. Because the fishermen have to follow the food source, whether it be they have to find a new fishing spot because the fish have caught on to them and they're not able to catch any more fish, or they're having to gather food from the land, they have to be able to move quickly and with that their homes that they make, their little huts, have to be able to be taken apart and moved quickly. Usually these are going to be made out of grass and sticks. They're going to be low and short to the ground. The main diet of the fishermen is going to be oysters, clams, scallops, turtles, and fish. But they also gather up certain foods like nuts, berries, and seeds to eat. The next group we're going to talk about are the plant gatherers, which are going to live in the inner section of Texas. These are the Tonkawas and the Coweltikins. Both of these tribes are small, well-built people. They also participate and decorate elaborate headdresses for ceremonies that they'll decorate with shells that they find, feathers, and beads that they make. They live in low, circular, dome-shaped huts, and the purpose here is to be able to move these wherever they need to go very quickly. They can be taken apart and put into some sort of pack on their back to where they can move quickly to where the food sources are located. As for food, they gather and they hunt. They gather herbs, roots, seeds, and fruit. While they hunt only really small animals, like rabbits, turtles, skunks, snakes, deer, and boar, which is wild pig. Now one of the interesting things about this group is that when a loved one dies, they go through a three month period of mourning where they're not allowed to leave the camp at all during that time. That means food must be brought to them from other community members. That can be really difficult. The next group we're going to talk about are the hunters, the Kiowas, the Lipan Apaches, and the Comanches. You're going to see these guys out here in the mountains and basins region and moving up into the panhandle region of Texas. They roam consistently through this part of Texas as well into Mexico and New Mexico. 
Now the hunters wore clothing made of buffalo hide, tanned buffalo hide, sometimes deer skin if that's available to them, and they decorate it with beads, shells, and feathers that they find. They also use the buffalo hide to make teepees, which is the home that they live in. It's larger than the dome-shaped huts of the central Texas region with the planter gatherers, but it's large enough to where a large family can live in it. It can easily be taken apart, just like the other dome-shaped hut. The hunter's main food source is the buffalo. They use the buffalo more than every other tribe, while, and while other tribes do use the buffalo, not to the extent of what the hunters do. They use it for food, they use it for clothing, they use it for their home, they use the bones as weapons. So they are very cautious about what they use from the buffalo, and they use every single part that they possibly can. They also think it's very healthy to drink the blood from a fresh killed buffalo. That's considered a rite of passage and the symbol of being a warrior. An interesting item about the hunters. When a young man was ready to become a warrior, he was sent alone for four days and nights to await visions. During this time, he would have to go without having food provided or water, and he would just wait for the visions. These visions that he would finally have would guide him for the remainder of his life. This would be like his spirit guide coming to help him and show him the way. Okay, moving on to the next group. Our next group are the farmers. They live in the northeastern part of Texas. Those are the Caddo's and the Wichita's. Now I want you to put a star in your notes right here because this group is the most important group for you to know. And the reason they're so important to know is because they're the most advanced. So make sure you have that written down. They are the most advanced group. We'll talk about that in just a moment. This group paints themselves in bright colors, and they also decorate themselves with shells, bones, animal teeth, seeds, and feathers. They also practice tattooing. The reason they can do all these things is because they do not have to move from place to place because they've learned to farm. They're able to build large B-shaped huts that do not get taken apart. They don't have to follow the food anymore. The food is available to them where they live. This group grows things like corn, beans, melon, squash, and pumpkin. They also grow tobacco. And they gather wild berries and small nuts, figs, peaches, and honey. Now they don't hunt, but they will trap small animals that they come across, such as rabbits that come near their camp. Now because this tribe didn't have to move constantly, not all of their men are warriors. They're able to differentiate into different roles within the community, and you're going to have some of these men in the tribes become peacemakers and shaman and other various roles within the community. They all don't have to learn to fight. Now why is this tribe the most advanced? Why is this group the most advanced? They have learned to bring the food to them. They're not actually having to go out and find the food. They've developed techniques along the way that have allowed them to stay put. So because they're allowed to stay put, they're able to build a culture and that is the mark of a more advanced society. When you're able to stay in one place and build your culture, you are more advanced. You do not have to move from place to place. And you can see this in the items that the Caddo's and the Wichita's make for art purposes. These are items that before they would not have, they wouldn't have made them because they'd have to carry them around from house to house. Now they don't have to worry about that. The sad part of this story is that most of these tribes are going to disintegrate by the mid-1800s, mainly due to disease, but also to warfare. You're not going to have many of these tribes left, and the people that are left in these tribes will get absorbed into other tribes that are still going. So disease from the Anglos moving into Texas and from European explorers takes out most of these populations. 
Okay, that's it for this video for this week. Make sure that you have the notes that you need and that you have a summary created on your WISC and answer the questions. And I will see you next time.